Now, high definition from the station on your side. This is Whitney News Online. Local SEAL Team 6 is being credited with Osama bin Laden's capture and death. Today, aside's Melanie Woodrow spoke with the former East Coast Bay SEAL about how the mission may have gone down. 9-11-2001 was a life-changing day for civilians, first responders, and special warfighters like Scott Taylor. After 9-11, that absolutely prompted me to re-enlist. I'd actually planned on getting out of the military. If we do it properly, we'll move on to something else. Taylor found himself back on the front line surrounded by other SEALs in elite, highly trained, and specialized group. These guys are the best of the best. While Taylor says he was not a member of SEAL Team 6, nor tasked with hunting down Osama bin Laden. He has first-hand knowledge of the rigorous training that led to bin Laden's successful capture and killing. Just like a NFL football team, they practice those plays over and over and over again until they're almost perfect at them. Training that was likely fueled by adrenaline. I'm certain that there was some, uh, some excitement in, in, their, in their guts knowing that they were going to go over there and uh, task specifically to take down Osama bin Laden. As for how long it took, some 10 years to capture bin Laden, Taylor says it was all about the intelligence. It's really tedious to, uh, to look for this guy and, and, and just review intelligence for years and years. You know, I mean, it's, it's hard work. Work, he says, can sometimes be lost on the general public. The ultimate victory clearly was not. Crowds gathered outside the White House and at Ground Zero, packing in plenty of patriotism. Why this act doesn't right the wrongs of, you know, of the things that were committed, the, the families that have sacrificed so much for this country, you know, they can stand proud knowing that in the end that justice came with the impact of an American bullet. That's Melanie Woodrow reporting. You may never know who specifically carried out this highly specialized mission. Scott Taylor says he doesn't believe the SEALs involved would want it to be singled out. Opening statements began today in the trial for former delegate Phil Hamilton. He pleaded not guilty to bribery and extortion charges in Richmond. He allegedly worked to secure public money for a job training center at ODU before trying to get a job there. Hamilton resigned as delegate in November after these allegations came to light. Now, in high definition, from the station on your side, this is Super Doppler 10 Online. We got one more warm day ahead. We hit the low 80s for today. Lots of sunshine. We're going to see lots of sunshine uh, for tomorrow as well and around 85 degrees. Well, a beautiful, beautiful day coming up for tomorrow. And we've got some definitely cooler air arriving late Tuesday night, more likely Wednesday morning through the day on Wednesday. Now, we can see a few showers uh, with a high near 63 coming up during the day on Wednesday. So some very, very big changes ahead uh, during the day on Wednesday, especially. Here's what's going on tomorrow morning. At 9, mostly sunny, 70 degrees noon hour, around 78 degrees, partly cloudy skies, partly cloudy at 3 o'clock. We'll see a high of around 85 degrees, south, southwest winds 10 to 15, partly cloudy and 83 degrees by 6 o'clock in the evening. Again, 85 degrees, nice warm day, and that chance of rain on Wednesday. It's not going to be a washout, though, not likely to see big thunderstorms. There's our big story of the day. It'll be a high temperature only into the low 60s for the bulk of the day. Thursday, 68, 70 on Friday, hanging around 70, really, from Friday all the way into the weekend. And thank you for watching Wavy News Online. Join us for the latest news tonight on Wavy News 10 at 11. Now, high definition from the station on your side. This is Wavy News Online.